All right, people. We're talking about righteousness right now. And the thing is, we can't do it by ourselves, people. I don't care who you are. That's why Jesus died on the cross. To give us direct connection to the Holy Ghost. And we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit. You know, and the Bible is inspired by men moved by the Holy Spirit to write it. And it's for our instruction. So we can't just build upon the Bible with our own instruction and our own way of thinking because that would mess up the whole doctrine. <laughs> All this, he said a little leaven leavens the whole lump. What you think that means? What you think that means? All it takes is a little deception to change the entire meaning of a thing that's written in the Bible. You understand? People come to me all the time. Well, the Bible was written by man. What was it written by man? That doesn't mean it's not right. Do you understand? If you read the Bible in this context, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing. But most people haven't took the time to read it. They go, oh, what other people say? What this say? What that say? Or somebody else understand it. And you got to understand, everybody ain't called to preach. Because you got to fit... Okay, you got to fit the guidelines. You know, you got to line up with the Bible. And the thing is, this is how I look at life. According to the Bible perspective. God intended for all of us to live a long life. He wanted us to be the old and gray headed at one point in time. He don't want us to die young. He don't. But the thing is, that don't apply to everyone. Because some people, just like Stephen are going to fulfill their purpose before others. But the majority, you know, some people might get it right at a young age like Stephen, but the majority of us not. You understand? You see, old age does something to you. It wisens you up, majority of people, especially those who are grounded in the faith. Like I, I was reading a Bible, I was reading a story a few years ago that was talking about they trying to get rid of the elders in the church. I'm going to tell you a story that's in the Bible about a man that was so famous and so rich and so wise about his son. It was about his son. You see, Solomon's son was not as wise as his father was. You see, when Solomon's son took position, the people said, hey, man, just loosen our burden a little bit. And he resulted, he started talking to the elders, the ones that assisted Solomon. But he's like, no, I ain't going to listen to them. He said, so he asked some of his friends, the people he grew up with, some advice. They said, make it worse. He was like, basically, Solomon made your burden this way. I'm going to make it even worse than that. And the people despised him for it. You understand? Because of who he was listening to. He didn't want to listen to what the other people said. And that's the thing. We got our free choices to follow who we want to follow. But one way is going to be wicked and one way is going to be right. It's simple. You got right and wrong in this world. You understand? And a lot of people don't want to listen to older people. These young kids think they know way more. I thought I knew more than my mama too. And then come to find out, as I got older, whoa, my mom was right on a lot of things. And I was wrong again, son, on a lot of stuff. You see, what the problem is today and age, a lot of people are getting itching ears. What people consider to be righteous. Not what God considers to be righteous. You know, how many people you see Go on Facebook or TikTok or Snapchat or YouTube and post their left hand knowing what their right hand is doing. How often do you see that? Look at this poor person here and I'm going to do it to be seen a man. And then you talk to people like that's what God wants us to do. Not like that. He wants you to do it in secret so he can reward you openly. What I look like, you know how that looks, man. Like I just pull over on a poor person, be like, you mind if I record me giving you this ham sandwich? 
you have your reward, says the Lord. You see, the world considers righteousness way different from other people. And these people think they're doing good, a good job. Well, if the Bible tells us to help the poor and all this, but it also tells us not to sound a trumpet like the hypocrites and the heathen. <laughs> you see, a lot of things you do as a Christian is going to be so secretive, but your, the Lord is going to see you. And the thing is, when you're a Christian, it's going to show that you're a Christian. Somebody might walk upon you helping somebody. But that's it. Somebody going to see your good deeds. But guess who's going to see it? The law is going to see it. You ain't got to broadcast it. Well, you got to prove to the world how good you are. Because none is good but God. But you can get on the right path. If you do the right things. And you can need help. You see, there are so many scribes and Pharisees around here. A scribe is somebody that knows the Bible frontwards and backwards. Can quote scripture. Can quote everything. Can do everything, can been helping do all this, but that don't mean they live by. It. I know people who can quote. I've heard of people. I don't know nobody, but they can quote, read the Bible front to backwards, without reading it. Can recite it. There are people out there that knows it from front to back. That don't mean they do it. Some people just got better memories than others. He said, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I command of you? Now, I, I did a video about that same verse years ago, a few years ago, probably last year. And I counted how many times the word hypocrite was said. It was a lot of times. I was like, God, Lee, I can just imagine the scribes and the Pharisees sitting there listening to Jesus talk about them right in their faces. Now, the Lord wants us to call it how I see it, because he called it. How he saw. As long as it's in truth. As long as it lines up with scripture. You got the right to rebuke anyone. You got the right to utilize righteous judgment. But he said first pull the plank out. And then you'll know how to pull the speck out. A lot of y'all still got planks. And I'm sure I still got a few planks in mine too. But the ones that I didn't, he didn't fix. I can, I can spread better. But when he start fixing all them planks. I'm going to be a better person. You know, I didn't say a perfect person. I'm going to be a better person for the Lord. And you will too. You know, a lot of y'all ain't reading. At all. You know, I thought for sure. When I started reading this Bible, it was going to be a one hit or quitter. I got it. I'm good. Here it is, 12 years or later. I'm still reading it and finding out new stuff. You know, longer than 12 years. By 13 now, I'm still finding new stuff. It's like it never gets old. It's just like his word says. My word will remain forever. It never gets old. I always find something new. Like I was reading the Bible the last week and I was telling some of my coworkers, I was like, you know, Judas was Peter's brother. And I'm like, what? I was like, man, I've read, I've read that. I was like, I did not know that. You know, it's, it's, Wow, it's so much stuff, so much stuff in the Bible that it's not meant for you to see right away, but you'll see later. But if you stop it, you just ain't never going to see it. You see those scribes and Pharisees figured they got it. They didn't got so caught up in their traditions. They got caught up in their ways, the Jewish ways. He said, you hold true to your traditions, but you make null and void mine. So God wants us to do away with a lot of traditional things that we've been doing our whole lives. The thing that keeps most people in bondage is tradition. Is tradition. I'm telling y'all people. Tradition to keep you caught up in the same circles. If you read the Bible and you read Kings and Chronicles, you will see these words right here. He followed in the traditions of his father Ahab. And he did boy evil than his father. He followed in the old tradition. But every time you see somebody fix, they find the Bible and they start following in God's traditions. The traditions of man and the traditions of the world mean nothing. We got a most famous tradition coming up 
in Mobile, Alabama this year. In the next few weeks, it's called Mardi Gras. And I grew up participating in Mardi Gras. I loved it. I lived for it. I worshiped Mardi Gras. I couldn't wait to Mardi Gras give me some free candy and moon pies, which I can go buy at the store. And then the thing is, the tradition keep going. You see, we are focused on that Mardi Gras tradition, the Mardi Gras balls and all this stuff. But when it comes to the word of God and the things that he wants us to do, we'll put them on a the back burner so we can do Mardi Gras. I ain't got nothing against people that do Mardi Gras because most people are black. But once you know the truth, it kind of does something to you. Ever since I've known the truth, I'm going to tell y'all the truth and I'm going to tell you the truth out of my mouth. The Lord has not allowed me to attend a Mardi Gras celebration in about 13 years. 13 years. About five years ago or six years ago. My nephew was like, we finna go to the last day of Mardi Gras. You want to ride with it? Uh, my part of me was like, man, okay, let me go, let me go. So I get there, we walking, how about it was over? I didn't even get to see a float. People was headed back. I'm like, well, let's turn around. That was a sign to me. Houston, no. This year, and my family has a tradition, Fat Tuesday. Everybody meet up over my auntie house to celebrate Mardi Gras. To celebrate Fat Tuesday. And we still do it to this day. I'm trying to remember the last time I was a part of it. 13 years ago. Probably longer than that. Because when I got out of the military, I moved to Alexander City. So there was no Mardi Gras up there. And I never really came to town for it. I always said I wanted to take my kids there. My daughter, 17 years old, and never seen Mardi Gras yet. My son, 12, never seen Mardi Gras. You see, they don't know about it. <laughs> they know about it, but they never participated in it. It starts with you. It starts with you. Everything starts with you. And when I say you, whoever listens to my voice, and then, it's, then it continues with Jesus. It starts with Jesus, then you. Let's put it that way. God is fixing you so you can line up your kids and you can sow good seed in the ground. You know, and the thing is, I realized since I stopped doing it, I don't miss it. I don't long for it at all. It's like, I know it's coming up, but I don't long for it. Like today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And I had a coworker text me today. He was like, you going to work today because it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to work. Because I don't look at these days that worship people like I used to. I take the free, if they gave me an off day, I'm going to take that off day. <laughs> but I ain't going to make a big deal if my boss don't take us or give us an off day. That's great with me too. Because it really don't affect me no more. You understand? We know what uh, Martin Luther King did. We don't have to idolize him for it. We know what he did. You understand? And he's not the only one. It's kind of messed up that he get a statue and not all these other people that did things too. Actually, nobody should be getting a statue according to my scripture. To God's scripture, I mean. It's mine too now because I didn't embrace it. That's truth. You understand? Who is Martin Luther King? A man. A man that I don't supposed to worship. You understand? And the thing is, the truth is that what's done in the dark will come manifest itself in the light. Did you know Martin Luther King was a womanizer? I'm not spreading gossip. I'm spreading facts. It's there. It's there, people. Wake up. Wake up. Let me pause and I will continue.